Hi everyone. Idaho citizens want closure of Muslim Illegal Alien Center taking an unscreened Islamist from Syria. Can you blame them? Syria Muslim Refugee Settlements is the back door for jihadists. A long-standing refugee welcoming center in conservative Idaho has found itself at the center of a campaign by adversaries seeking to force it closed. Citing fears that the Muslim illegal aliens it hosts could include a large number of Islamic State ISIS terrorists. ISIS has already confirmed it is embedding jihadists among Syrian refugees headed for the West. The backlash comes amid an uptick in anti-Islamic protests and advertising campaigns in the United States, including a high-profile May rally outside the Arizona mosque that saw more than 200 protesters. Some armed great Islam and Muhammad, the newly formed Idaho group, whose 100 members plan a door-to-door -door information drive in July to win support for closing the refugee center in Twin Falls, said it was concerned the center will welcome Syrians displaced from the country's civil war who may not have been adequately screened by the U.S. government for security risks. Bringing in Syrians who are prominently of Muslim backgrounds may be opening a door to terrorists pretending to be refugees, said Rick Martin, head of the so-called Committee to End the CSI, College of Southern Idaho. Refugee Center in nearby Bull, a conservative ag agricultural area. We're not against legitimate refugees. They need to be treated with dignity and respect, but it would be easy for someone to lie about their background, he added. The U.S. authorities have arrested numerous individuals, including a member of a number of U.S. citizens, in recent months over accusations of supporting Islamic State militants operating in Syria and Iraq. But there has been no indication of any substantial links between Islamic State militants and the resettled Syrian refugee community. The U.S. State Department spokesman Daniel Langenkamp said refugees are the most carefully vetted of travelers to the United States. The CSI Refugee Center, mostly federally funded, has in the past three decades helped resettle several thousand refugees from countries including Afghanistan, Sudan, and Vietnam. A recent United Nations report showed the world's biggest refugee crisis is tied to the 4 million displaced from Syria. More than 850 refugees from the war-torn Arab nation have been admitted into the United States since October. So, just stating my opinion here. Now, we're bringing all these refugees over because of the fighting. Okay, we're bringing in the Muslims. Yet over there, the Muslims kill the Christians because they're not practicing Islam. And the Christians are being beheaded and running. Why aren't we bringing the Christians instead of the Muslims? It just doesn't make sense to me. Both George W. Bush and Barack Obama have declared that Islam is a religion of peace. Anjum Chowdhury begs to differ. You can't say that uh, Islam is a religion of peace because Islam it does not mean peace. Islam is uh, it means it's Islam submission. So the Muslim is the one who submits. You know, there's a place for violence in Islam. There's a place for jihad in Islam. Chowdhury is the leader of Islam for UK, a group recently banned in Britain under the country's counterterrorism laws. He wants Islamic Sharia law to rule the United Kingdom and is working to make that dream a reality. He's seen here converting a 10-year-old British boy to Islam. <laughs> Islamic radicals in the United States are usually pretty savvy. They wear suits and ties. They speak, at least publicly, in moderate tones. But here in London, it's often a different story. Anjum Chowdhury has praised the 9-11 hijackers and called for the execution of Pope Benedict. Chowdhury told CBN News his group is a nonviolent political and ideological movement that resides in the UK under a covenant of security. Yet he openly praises violent jihad. The Quran is full of, you know, jihad is the most talked about duty in the Quran after Tawheed, belief. Nothing else is, more, is mentioned more than the topic of fighting. Several former members of Chowdhury's group have been arrested on terrorism charges. A very significant number of 
of, of, of former al Jarun people were involved in terrorist plots against this country. A number of people have actually gone to Afghanistan, joined the Taliban, and died fighting uh, for the Taliban. Chowdhury refuses to condemn acts of terror, including 9-11 and the July 7, 2005 London bombings, which killed 52 people. What were your thoughts on the 7-7 bombings? Did you condemn them? Did you support them? For the people who carried out, it was legitimate. If you look at the will of Muhammad Zadi Khan and Shijanat Anvir, they will justify it and they will bring many verses from the Quran and many statements to say that that's the Islamic argument. And it's a difficult Islamic argument to refute. And there are many scholars who support that argument as well. Chowdhury says his group is merely following core Islamic teachings. He says Islam is much more than a religion. This particular uh, belief is more than just a religion. It's not just a spiritual belief. It is in fact an ideology which you believe in and you struggle for and you're willing even to die for because you believe in that. That is your whole life. He seems to relish being called Great Britain's most hated man, pledging to continue his rallies, calling for the overthrow of the British system. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News, London. Eric is with us now, and Eric, how does Chowdhury's uh, opinions, uh, or how do his opinions differ from what would be considered the more moderate Muslim? Well, Pat, one word, honesty. Anjum Chowdhury tells you exactly what he thinks, exactly what he feels. He wants Islamic Sharia law, he supports jihad, and he doesn't like Christians and Jews. And he'll tell you that to your face, Pat. It's a lot different than here in the U.S. You know, I've interviewed so many Muslim leaders, supposedly moderate Muslim leaders here in the U.S., who tell me one thing on camera, but behind the scenes, when they're talking to fellow Muslims, they say quite another thing. It's the old Yasser Arafat rule, Pat. Mm -hmm. Say one thing to a Western audience, another thing to a Muslim audience. I think our viewers should consider this interview with Anjum Chattery an education. He is telling you exactly what they really believe, and we need to prepare for it. How do you think George Bush and uh, uh, our current president got so snuckered? Maybe our president isn't snuckered. Maybe he's a crypto Muslim. I don't know. What do you think? You know, Pat, it's tough to say. I think, well, I think, honestly, there's just an ignorance about Islam. If you look back to the Cold War, you look back to the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was a guy who devoured everything he could get his hands on about communism, Marxism, Stalinism, the Soviet Union. He knew the enemy. I think our political leaders today, Pat, on both sides of the aisle are completely ignorant, uh, ignorant about Islam. We had a Democratic leader just three years ago who didn't know the difference between Shia and Sunni. And this was a guy sitting on an intel committee, Pat. So there's ignorance across the board. And the reality here, Pat, let's face it, it's difficult to accept. It's not a pleasant reality that Islam it has a violent, violent streak. It's much easier to sugarcoat it and say, hey, we, you know, Islam is a religion of peace. We can reason with these people. No. I sat down with Anjum Chattery for over an hour there in London, Pat, and I'll tell you, you can't reason with him. He's not going to budge from this belief, and that belief is jihad. What do you think about political correctness? Have the American people been so seduced by political correctness that they refuse it? We won't even mention Islam now in, in official uh, proclamations. Political correctness, Pat, could end up being the death of us. I think political correctness right now is killing Europe. Uh, the, the reluctance, once again, to identify not only the enemy, but what the enemy believes. This is what they believe. And Pat, as Chowdhury said, they're getting this from the Quran. They're getting it from the Hadith. I wish it wasn't so, but it is. And it's been in there for 1,500 years. And to them, this is unchanging. It can't be changed. What we need is some Muslims. We can't do it. Some Muslims have to step up, look at the Quran, and say, hey, we have to bring this up to date to the 21st century. It's not the 7th century anymore. We need to bring it into the modern day. We need to strike these verses about jihad and, and try to translate in a way that it doesn't apply to the present day. That's a very, very tall order, Pat. As you know, sure. that's what we need. I don't know that we'll get it. Eric, I don't think we will either, but it looks like this violent confrontation is coming up all around the world, and we've got, there's no escaping. We've just got to be strong and, and you know, fight these things wh where we can. But Eric Stackelberg, great work. Keep it up. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Pat. was moving too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of 
ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. Was moving too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. This is an old article, but I'm going to go ahead and use this anyway, since I still have it. Um, schools giving Muslims special treatments. Now, I don't remember any Christians getting extra recess so they can go read their Bible. But these Muslims seem to get extra recess so they could go pray. And they're building, or have built already, foot baths for them to do their foot cleansing rituals. Even at work, the workforce is letting them have extra breaks just so they can go pray. Some are off the clock, some are on. But there's been no special treatment for any other religions, so I don't really see why this would come about, especially in school. Now when they have breaks and stuff, like Christmas break, well, they're changing that too. So most schools have already got it to where it's winter break, not Christmas break. They don't do Easter anymore. Uh, anything that's religious, they're taking out of the school because they're afraid it'll offend Muslims. But I tell you what, they're from a whole different place. They shouldn't come in here and try and change our stuff up. I mean, this is making it to where the kids' lives are a living hell because they can't enjoy anything that they look forward to anymore. This is getting so ridiculous about this offending, that I'm offended, but they're offended. They're offended of our flag. Oh, our flag. We're not over there taking down their flag or saying you need to take that flag down. We wouldn't do that. We weren't raised that way. We are all different. I'm not sure exactly where I am religious-wise. I just know I have certain beliefs. But I also believe that if you're going to come here to our country, it is your flag too. The Islamic flag is not your flag anymore. The American flag is your flag, goddammit. And that you should appreciate that, and you should appreciate where you are. Oh, and that Sharia law? Well, you better just hang that one up. That stuff that don't belong here either. Well, I'm going to leave it for you to decide. What you think about it, and I'll leave you a few memes that I just enjoy looking at. Thanks for watching.